Hi everybody, welcome back to day two. I'm Jean-Denis, CTO of Plaid. Today, I wanna to talk to you about the experience of building with Plaid. We've always cared a lot about making our API, our docs, link, self-serve support, our entire developer experience powerful, flexible, and easy to use. With as little friction as possible as you build, launch, and scale your apps and services with Plaid. The theme for us has always been easy for developers. And we have three speakers who are gonna expand on that theme today. First, we're gonna talk about the dashboard and improvements we are making to your experience troubleshooting connections and understanding the historical status of financial institutions. Then we'll have someone talk about the sandbox and a lot of new features we're bringing to new developers at Plaid so they can get started and have that magical moment with Plaid as quickly as possible. And then finally, we're gonna talk about our bank transfer solution, especially how it applies to lenders to make account funding and disbursement as easy as possible. Before we get into these three themes though, I wanna highlight some of the foundational work that we do at Plaid in the background. And I say in the background because as you know, Plaid is a platform. And the thing that makes a platform successful often happens behind the scenes. First, I wanna talk about quality and big quality wins. So late last year and early this year, we spoke to a lot of you about what did you want from Plaid? What was the most meaningful thing and important thing that we could do to help you succeed on top of the platform? And one of the topics that kept coming up was this idea of quality, data quality, integration quality, everything that goes into you having the best data to build on top of. I'm really proud that over the last nine months, we've invested a ton of time and effort across engineering and product to improve the quality. And here you'll see things like better integration quality dimensions, data that is more accurate, and also just a more performant API and platform. All these things really add up. And the point that I'm trying to make, and what I wanted you to take away, is that at Plaid, we're always working behind the scenes to make the product better. And understanding what parts of the API and what parts of data quality matter the most to you is a big part of how we prioritize our work and our investments. The second theme that I wanna talk about is this idea that Plaid Link is Plaid. For you and for your users, Link is a huge part of the onboarding experience. So we've been asking ourselves, what can we do to make Link even better? And I'm really excited to say that we've launched something in the background called Flexible Link, which is gonna allow us to iterate on the Link platform without any SDK updates, basically making Link faster and safer. For the nerds like me in the audience, Flexible Link is a server-side controlled framework for Plaid's entire Link experience. This means that you'll no longer need to update your SDK nearly as frequently to get the best version of Link. It means that you can expect new flows, UI improvements, more cross-platform support, and better authentication without having to do anything. For example, you can expect an improved Android native UI to be launching without you having to do any of this work. The great thing about Flexible Link is it's also gonna allow us to make great product improvements that are use case specific. And so you can expect Link to start to adapt such that there would be a version of Link that is optimized for lenders or optimized for payers and payment solutions or optimized for PFMs. This is the kind of value that we wanna to deliver to you and I'm really, really excited for Link to evolve over the coming years on top of this new flexible Link platform. The third theme is supporting even more institutions and even more types of data on the Plaid network. Obviously in 2021, we made a lot of investments on APIs and OAuth to help you transition to those experiences and bring a lot of their benefits like app to app authentication to your apps. We're really excited about some of the things that we're doing moving forward, a better sandbox, streamlined onboarding, a simplified SDK that will contribute to all of you having access to OAuth and APIs. April's gonna come by a little bit later and tell you about that. A big thank you, by the way, to all of you who worked with us to complete those migrations this year. We knew the work was non-trivial. But another thing that I'm really excited about under this theme of bringing more fintechs, more banks, and more data to all of you is Plaid Exchange. Plaid Exchange is a platform we launched last year. It's basically an API in a box solution for financial institutions to be able to enable data portability and connectivity for all their users. 
What's really exciting about Cloud Exchange initially is that it was focused on the long tail of banks and helping those banks quickly transition to a digital financial world. What's interesting now, though, is that Plot Exchange increasingly is being used by many of our fintech customers, including digital first neo banks like Chime and Aspiration, so that their users can benefit from being on the Plot network. For all of you, what this means is better data from long tail institutions, but also better data from fintechs coming your way. And I really hope that in the coming months, we can get all of Plot's developers to be on Plot Exchange and on our network. So I really want to thank you again for all of your feedback and input into our product and platform. We wouldn't be able to make any of these improvements without a really great partnership with all of you, our developers. I'm really humbled to get to build with you. Now I'm going to hand the stage over to Hee-Sun from our product team, who's going to talk about the improvements that we're making to the developer experience in the dashboard. Finally, please don't forget, we've got a lot of exciting workshops today. Please stick around and check them out. Thank you again, and see you next year. Hi, I'm He Sun, and I'm a product manager at Plaid. Yesterday, you heard about all the new products we're launching to help improve conversion, provide you with better insights, and help you grow into new opportunity areas. Today, I'm going to talk about the ways we're helping you build, scale, and launch your application with Plaid. My team, the developer experience team, is focused on building the tools and resources to help you succeed and grow with Plaid. We work on everything from the docs to help you learn about the APIs, the sandbox to test your integration, and the workflows in the dashboard to support your users. We know that while your integration with Plaid is just one part of your app's experience, it's a crucial one for many of you. If a user can't connect their accounts to your service using Plaid, they may not be able to access the features that you're building for them. To figure out how we could best support you, we recently spoke with a few of you to understand how you help your users when they run into issues. No matter what kind of support organization you have, what we heard from all of you is that you want to get as much information about your Plaid integration as quickly and efficiently as possible. We heard that you want information about an institution's connectivity and a user's Plaid session all at your fingertips so that you can figure out what happened and the solution to the user's issue all on your own. We listened to your feedback and made improvements on both institution status on the developer dashboard and within Link to simplify how you support your users. Today, I'll be talking about these features, starting with improvements to status. For folks who are new to Plaid, I'll start by explaining institution status and where it came from. Two years ago, we launched Institution Status, our first troubleshooting tool in the dashboard, to give you visibility into the integrations that we have with the more than 11,000 financial institutions that we can connect you to. The Status page shows the real-time connectivity of Plaid to these institutions so you can see if it's up or down. Over the past few months, we spent time with you to understand what we could add to status to make it even easier for you to troubleshoot issues. Today, I'm excited to share three of these updates and walk through them with you. First, I'll talk about a new view that we're calling historical status. We initially built institution status to give you an easy way to view Plaid's connection to an institution in real time. But we heard from you that to better troubleshoot user issues, you actually need a more complete view of an institution's connectivity over a longer period of time. We realized that this was so useful to have on hand that some of you were actually piecing this view together yourselves. Now, we don't want you to have to approximate that view and spend the time to build it internally when it's something that we can provide for you. So I'm excited to share that we've built a new graph view into each institution's individual status page that shows the connectivity over the past two weeks. This new view highlights the percentage of item ad successes for all products, auth, identity, investments, liabilities, and transactions across Plaid globally. Now you'll be able to see the trend of connectivity over time and pinpoint where there might have been connection outages. You can hover over the graph to see connectivity by product for each day, even down to the hour. With historical status, if a user writes in to ask why they couldn't connect yesterday or a few days ago, 
you'll be able to go back and see if there was a connectivity issue and recommend that they try again based on what you see in the graph. Second, we're servicing a new metric within institution status for those of you who use our transactions API. It's called transaction freshness. We heard that having tailored insights into your integration with Plaid can help you provide even better on-the-spot support for your users, especially when they ask, why don't I see my most recent transactions in your app? Today, your support team may not have visibility into when the items for a particular institution were last updated, and you likely use your own knowledge of the user's connected institution's activity to make an assessment. Some of you, like Copilot, a personal financial management app, have gone as far as building your own internal dashboard to estimate the freshness of the transaction data provided by Plaid. Again, we don't want you to have to approximate this data, and it's why we're introducing a new data freshness metric on each institution status page. The best part of this feature is that it's personalized for you. For institutions where you have more than 25 items, you'll see a personalized chart that reflects the percentage of your items that have been updated for transaction data over a specific time period. Seeing the breakout across time intervals will enable you to quickly assess whether there may be an issue that could impact Plaid's ability to retrieve user permission data. Several customers are already using this and finding that it's really helpful for them to see if there may be transaction issues and using these insights better communicate with their users. The third improvement to status is surfacing investments institutions. Previously, if you were using our investments API, you might not see information about investments institutions within status. We knew that this was a gap for many of you, so we worked on adding data for these institutions into the dashboard. Now, you'll be able to see the connectivity of investments institutions that Plaid connects to in status, alongside our supported institutions. Now that you've heard about the three investments we've made to institution status, the fourth and final thing I'll talk about is how we're bringing all of this integration visibility directly to users on Link. Right now, if your users have an issue connecting, they're likely reaching out to you via your support channels to get a resolution. So even with all of these new self-serve features that we've added, that still means that you have to take the time to investigate the user's issue and give them a timely response. So we asked ourselves, what if we could surface helpful connectivity information directly to users at the moment they're connecting? Would that improve their experience with Plaid and your app? We decided to put this into practice with the goal of setting expectations for a user trying to connect to an institution where Plaid is experiencing connectivity issues. So now we will provide proactive messaging if a user-selected institution is incompatible or experiencing unstable connectivity. We'll give them context directly in the flow and provide useful information to encourage them to try again, connect to another institution, or check for a different connection method. You'll see us continue to invest in providing more context for users so that we can give your users the most intuitive and efficient experience possible. We're really excited about how all of these new features in Status and Link will help you support your users. But we know this is still just the beginning. We're going to be investing in even more tools and features to help make your experience with user support better and better. I'd love to hear about what else we can build or any questions that you have about what I talked about today. The developer experience team will be at the developer office hours later today, so please come and visit us. So I have talked about just one part of how we're making it easier for you to build with Plaid. Now I'll hand it off to April, my colleague, to talk about how we're improving other parts of the developer experience to make your development journey with Plaid faster and more intuitive. Hi, I'm April, an engineering manager here at Plaid. I'm here to talk with you about how you can get started more quickly and easily with our newest developer tools and platforms. We love your feedback and we're always listening, so I'm excited to share with you all what we've been building. We're all about helping our community grow and that means you. What I do here at Plaid is work on our developer surface areas. That includes the link module, the portal that Adam spoke with you all about yesterday, and the developer dashboard. So let's jump in. 
I'd like to talk with you first about some of Plaid's client libraries and how we've been using the open API spec. Now in the past, Plaid has provided libraries written in several of the most popular languages people use to build on top of Plaid. What we've done this year is release our open API spec file in the open API format. That makes it easier for us to keep our own libraries up to date, but it also makes it possible for our developers to auto-generate libraries in 40 plus languages. So this means that our developer community can share those libraries with each other as well. You can find out more about all this on our GitHub. Next, I'd like to share with you all about our pattern apps. Our pattern apps are hands-on examples of code bases that integrate with Plaid. Now you're probably familiar with Plaid's documentation, and these pattern apps show all that information in the docs in action. We have two different apps. We have a PFM app and an account funding app. And in both of those example apps, you'll see how to integrate with Link, how to integrate with our APIs and our webhooks, and you'll also see how to navigate OAuth. You can use these tools to show users the balance in their accounts, their debits and their recent spending, and to do things like identity verification. We also show you how to get a processor token with ACH processing partners. Will and Nathan, two of my colleagues, are hosting a workshop later today about integrating with webhooks, and they're gonna show you examples from those pattern apps. The last set of tools I'd like to share with you today are around our OAuth migrations and our bank API integrations. We've created a new page in our developer dashboard that shows you where you're at in the process of migrating to OAuth with each one of our financial institutions. That includes where you're at with registration, the security questionnaire, and enablement with each specific bank. To further support the goal of making OAuth migrations easier for you, we've also added new features to our Sandbox environment so you can see an example OAuth institution in Sandbox, and you can see how it will behave eventually on production. I really love these new OAuth resources because they get you up and running on a particularly robust bank integration method, ensuring your continued data access. Lastly, I'd like to switch gears and talk with you about some hands-on support we've provided some of our customers. FinRise is a program we launched last year that's an incubator for early stage startups with founders who are black, indigenous, or people of color. And I'd like to share two examples from our first cohort. Walnut is a point of sale lending platform that helps users get access to affordable healthcare, a mission we're really passionate about here at Plaid. We've helped Walnut to launch a new cash flow underwriting product, and we've helped them to identify a banking partner. The next app I'd like to speak with you all about is Zeta, a budgeting app for couples that helps couples navigate different life stages and keep track of their spending and saving. We've worked with Zeta to get them up and running on Plaid Exchange, and we've helped them navigate contractual and regulatory landscape issues. We're inspired every day by the amazing work of our first FinRise cohort and we're announcing that we're opening up two new FinRise cohorts for 2022. We encourage your applications. FinRise program director, Nell, will be hosting a fireside chat with our program participants from our first cohort, and will also provide more information about how you can apply. Now I'd like to hand off to Alex P, who's going to talk a little bit about how we're making ACH transactions even easier. Hi everybody, my name is Alex and I'm an engineering manager working on new products here at Plaid. I'm really excited to present the last product of the day to you here. You heard yesterday about Signal, which is our solution to ACH risk and making ACH faster. Now I'd like to tell you a little bit about another product my team has been working hard on. For companies that are just starting out, particularly those in the lending space, we've heard a lot of feedback about their experiences with ACH. There's a lot of benefits to it. It's a cost-effective solution, and you can use it in places that card payments don't work very well. However, there's also a bunch of challenges. For example, you have to deal with operational complexity, such as complying with NACHA requirements. And then finally, perhaps most importantly, you have to deal with multiple vendors and many moving pieces, which can slow down your development timelines and your overall time to market. For some examples, you have to use Plaid to link an account, you have to find a processor for the ACH payments, and then use up your own development time to build up a user experience. This is especially true for those of you who are lenders, since you have a lot of product and operational complexity to deal with outside of the payment space. That's why what we're launching today is Plaid Transfer, which is one single place for all of your ACH needs. It's been designed specifically for lenders, 
so that you can focus on your own product and business use case and optimize your speed to market. What Transfer does, at its most basic, is offers the ACH debit and credit functionality that you need to initiate payments for your business. On top of that, we have dashboards and reconciliation so you can manage your money flows and understand each particular payment. We also offer risk management as part of the solution. And finally, we have a user experience that's been optimized for conversion and is built with not just standards in mind. How it works is that it all starts with a simple onboarding process that can get you up and running in just a few days. We manage all the details and compliance needed for this process. After that, you get a set of APIs and client-side components that you can use to get the functionality that I mentioned earlier. It connects with your Plaid integration, especially Plaid Link. We also include Signal into this package, which has Plaid's risk assessment technology. This overall offers an end-to-end -end solution that combines the transfer functionality as well as the Signal risk assessment. This product is in beta currently, available for startup lenders. Reach out to us if you're interested in giving this a try. We'll be sharing a lot more information soon. With that, we have a number of exciting workshops happening later today. I'd encourage you all to check those out. If you have any questions on any of the product announcements we discussed today, come find us later at the developer office hours. As Jean-Denis mentioned, your feedback is what drives our roadmap and what we build. So please let us know what features or updates you'd like to see from us. I hope you enjoy Platform, and I'm personally excited to get to meet all of you in person sometime soon. But for now, happy building, and thank you for joining us.